sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh, sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, a rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. So lay down your burden. morning's reading comes from Hosea 2, 14 and 15, and 21 through 23. 
Therefore, I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into wilderness and speak tenderly to her. Then I will give her back to vineyards and will give and will make the valley of Achor a door of hope. There, <clears throat> there she will respond as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came out of Egypt. In that day, I will respond, declares the Lord. I will res- respond to the skies and they will respond. Uh, respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain the new wine and the olive oil and they will respond to Jezreel I will plant her for myself in the land I will show my love to one I called not my love not my loved one I will say to those called not my people you are my people and they will say you are my God I hope you guys have enjoyed the sermon series in Hosea as much as I have. And uh, Usually when I preach in front of you guys, I, it's somewhat discom- uncomfortable because I'm, uh, I'm used to speaking to teenagers and the certain words I can use that I can't use here. And there's certain jokes I can say. There's certain stories. And so as I begin to preach in front of you guys, it's become more and more comfortable. And I don't know what that means, but just, uh, you know, it's been good. It's been fun. We got one more uh, uh, session after this and two weeks after Jim Chapman. And uh, it just, you guys got to hold on. Finalize of the story of Hosea and Gomer. You guys, about four weeks ago, we talked about the covenant love of God. God has brought us into his covenant. 
Because of sin in our lives, because we preferred his competitors over us, we have had to face the judgment of God. And the judgment of God is a separation from him, but the story does not end there. He brings restoration to our lives. And we can enter into a brand new covenant, a brand new relationship with Jesus Christ. A couple of weeks ago, guys, we talked about the tender love of God. And, or sorry, that's this week. Last couple weeks ago, we talked about the tough love of God and how God sets boundaries around our lives, not because He doesn't want us to have fun, but because He loves us and He wants to keep us from certain things in our lives. He wants to protect us from the heartache, hurts, and pains that life can bring. If any of you guys have been watching the news recently, you've uh, uh, a great family that just lives just south of here in Arkansas, the Duggars. You know, their son has made some choices that has broken their hearts. And, and uh, parents, this Wednesday we're having a parents meeting. We're going to talk about the year, uh, year's events and, and just uh, how much things cost and just give you a calendar. But one thing I want to talk to you about is it appears that the Duggars, the parents, Jim, Bob, and, and uh, whatever her name is, Michelle, has done everything right. And guys, we can do everything right for our students, but if we don't give them the tools to succeed in life and have victory over sin, we have failed them. So guys, this Wednesday, I'm going to talk about some things that we can do specifically when it comes to sexual temptation that we can help our students. And it's not just guys. It's girls also. Statistics show that... uh, Young ladies are viewing pornography just as much as young men. And it's a, it's a dangerous trend that we are, we are beginning to see as youth ministers when it comes to our students. So parents, do not miss this parents meeting. It's going to be after uh, our Wednesday night service at about 8 o'clock. It lasts about 30 minutes. And if, uh, if you have a grandchild that goes to youth ministry and their parents don't come to church, I encourage you to come. You, as p- grandparents, you can do a lot to help encourage your grandchildren to be successful when it comes to sexual temptation. But guys, this morning I'm going to talk about the tender love of God. A couple weeks ago was a tough sermon because we don't want to talk about God disciplining us. But this week, guys, it's kind of a little bit more fun because we see God come in and begin to love us. We see Hosea come in and begin to love Gomer. Hey guys, I want you to pay attention real quick. All the fellas in the room, I'm going to include myself. Whether you're married or not, guys, women love to be won. They want you to win their hearts. They want to be wooed by you. I remember when, many, many years ago, about 16 years ago, when I began to win the heart of Lisa. And I would go underneath her window at Rice. She was on the second floor. And I get one of my buddies to take their guitar. And I get on my knees and say, Love me to... Oh, wait, that's the wrong song. Oh, my love, my darling, I've hungered for your touch. Some of you older folks will know that song. Actually, I didn't do that, but that'd be really cool. <laughs> it's a good thought, you know. Hey, fellas, whether you're married or not, that sounds like a great idea. That's, that's your homework for this week. Do something then it incredibly blows your wife away. Uh, Use your imagination. And that's where we find ourselves in the story of Gomer and Hosea. Hosea 14, it says, And therefore I I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. Guys, up to this point in the story of Gomer and Hosea, it seems like it's more like the Jerry Springer show. But instead of throwing punches, instead of making a spectacle of out of Gomer and, and how much he's hurt her and how much he wants to hurt her, he's taken her privately away and begins to speak tenderly to her. And he begins to remind her of why she first fell in love with him. Just like Elvis long time ago love me tender love me sweet never let me go 
love me tender, love me true, all my dreams fulfilled. Oh, my darling, I love you, and I always will. Guys, that's the same way that God loves us. He calls us in. Here's the kicker. That no matter how much Homer loved, Hosea loved Gomer, she had to receive the love of her husband. Last week we talked about the prodigal son. And the prodigal son, it, it didn't, his response to his father was priceless. He had to receive the love of the father. You see, as many times we know that God loves us. And we know that God loves us, but, but sometimes we are unable to receive the love of God. We think that now we've done way too much. We, we've, we've broken His heart. We've broken people's heart. There's no way that I could receive the love that God has given to me. I've done so many things in my life to break His heart. But that's why God still loves loves us he wants to draw us in in fact in romans 8 verse 38 it says for i am convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons neither the present or the future nor any powers nor any height or death or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus our lord Guys, did you get that this morning? That there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. There's nothing that you can do in the past. There's nothing that you can do in the future that would cause God to love you any less than he does right now. In fact, there's a verse that's right above that in verse 37. It says, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Guys, because God loves us, because the, the, this unconditional love that he gives to us, we can be more than conquerors in this life, especially when it comes to sin and temptation, especially when it comes to successes in life. Guys, we can become more than conquerors. It doesn't mean that we have to continue to live in the past. It means that we can continue to live in the future. We don't have to live in the sin that we lived in the past. Guys, we can be forgiven of that, and we can move on. Guys, I want you to hear that this morning. And maybe there's someone here this morning <clears throat> that you are stuck in the sins of the past. You know that God has forgiven you of those things, but you have not forgiven yourself of those things. Guys, the tender love of God comes. And He wraps His arms around you and He says, I love you. I have forgiven you. you guys, no longer live in the sins of the past. Just like the prodigal son, the father wrapped his arms around his son no matter how dirty or smelly he was. I'm sure he didn't take a shower. I'm sure he didn't shave. He came as he was. And the father still loved him. Guys, my question for you this morning is will you receive the tender love of God? Will you allow him to forgive you when you have strayed and you've turned your back on him. Guys, when we begin to receive the love of God, our response is a change of who we are. When we receive the love of God, the response of that is the change of who we used to be. You see, the tender love of God captures our hearts. It changes our identity. Go back to Hosea 2, verse 23. And it says, I'll plant her for myself in the land, and I'll show my love to the one I called not my loved one. I will say to those called not my people, you are my people, and they will say, you are my God. Guys, when we begin to receive the tender love of God, it changes who we are. Some of you guys who have had a relationship with Jesus Christ for many, many years, you can understand this. Because I remember who I was before. And I know who I am today. 
I never want to go back to the person I was. But because of the tender love of God, because I was able to receive that, God has slowly changed my identity to where I'm no longer the old Virgil Peck. I am the new Virgil Peck, and I'm continually being changed and continually being grown. First, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? He is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Guys, you are a new creation. The old self has gone away. It is no more. Our response is that our identity is no longer found in ourselves, but it's found in the one who loves us. And when we respond to God, he'll respond back to us in restoration. Hosea 2, 21. And that day I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth. And the earth will respond to the grain and the new wine and the oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. You see, guys, when we respond to God, His response back to us is restoration. He restores us back to where we were initially supposed to be, back before Adam and Eve sinned, back before the, our own personal sin. God begins to restore us back into the right relationship with Him. You see, God doesn't want just to forgive us of our sins. He wants to restore us from our sins. He wants to restore us back to who we were. He wants to restore us from our brokenness. He wants to restore us from our hurts. And He wants to restore us from our sins. He is saying, once you were against me, now you are for me. Once you were not mine, but now you are mine. When the tender love of God captures our hearts, it changes us. When the tender love of God captures our hearts, it changes us. God doesn't want us to come to Him clean and perfect. We'll never get that way. God wants us to come to Him just as we are. When He begins to love us and captures our hearts. He changes us. He changes our identity. There's an old book. And just because I'm holding a book does not mean I've read this book. It's an old book called Don Quixote, The Adventures of Don Quixote. And trust me, I'm not smart enough to read this book. In fact, I got it from the library and I looked at it and I'm like, holy smokes, those words are really small. I did read the juvenile version of this, so I do kind of know what the story's about. But it's an old-time literature. And it's about this man who is this hopelessly romantic. And he, he's, even though he's not a knight, he acts like he's a knight, and he wants to go around doing good for other people. And, and he's a dreamer. He, he dreams of these incredible things. In fact, he sees things that aren't real, but real. And it says that he was a jouster of windmills. And every windmill that he came across, he envisioned them to be a dragon and, or a giant. It was a giant, right, Valerie? Okay, there we go. It was a, a giant. And so he would joust these giants, and he had this, uh, this sidekick called, called Sancho. But guys, it's a crazy story. Hopefully your English teacher in junior high or senior high Ask you to read this. It says that within the story, he falls in love with this young lady named Aldonza. Now, Aldonza, you have to understand, is not exactly the lady that you want your son to date or marry. In fact, she's kind of a whole lot like Gomer. It says that in the story that she was a barmaid, and along with that, her occupation was a prostitute. And so he falls in love with this lady. And Aldonza rejects the love of Don Quixote because she has done incredible things in her past. And she doesn't believe that any man would ever love her just as she is. Don Quixote doesn't care. He goes around doing incredible things in the name of Aldonza. In fact, he falls so much in love with her that he renames her Dulcinea which means elegant sweetness, sweetness. 
the story goes on, many years had passed, and Don Quixote is old, somewhat blind, and on his deathbed. And this young, beautiful lady comes to his side. And it says in the story that she looked like a Spanish queen. Because he didn't recognize her, he asked who she was, and here's her response. It says, my Lord, do you not remember? I was once Aldonza, and you gave me a brand new name. You called me Dulcinea. I am your lady, Dulcinea. You see, the love of Don Quixote radically changed the life of Aldonza. Even to the fact that she began to believe that she was elegant sweetness. She began to present herself. She began to dress that way. It totally changed her life. You see, God comes in, into our lives, and he says, you are not what you were before, but you are what you are today. I am beginning to change you. The love of God comes into our lives, and we begin to receive it, and we respond to it, and our lives are totally changed. You see, guys, the tender love of God that lives inside of us can powerfully powerfully change the life of another. Guys, when we begin to respond to the tender love of God, He changes our life, and we are no longer the way that we were before. But guys, it doesn't stop there. Because of the tender love of God that's inside of us, we are to therefore go forth and show the tender love of God those who are around us. And guys, when we begin to do that, we begin to radically change and powerfully change the lives of those who are around us. So guys, this morning the the sermon is twofold. It's have you received the tender love of God? Have you allowed God to radically change your life? And the second thing is, is have you radically changed the lives of others who are around you? Maybe there's somebody in your life that's extremely hard to love. Maybe things, maybe you've done something to them. Maybe they've done things to you. And you've chosen to reject that person. And you've chosen to not show the tender love of God to that person. You guys, I've seen it many, many times in my own life. I've seen it many, many times in the lives of other people. Guys, when we begin to show love, we begin to show respect and appreciation to that person, it begins to change the relationship you have that with that person. When I first became a youth pastor, there was a gentleman that uh, he had done some things that he didn't want me around. Let me put it that way. And frankly, coming down to it, I didn't want him around. And so there, there was this break of relationship. He left the youth ministry after about a year. And God began to change both of our hearts, not just mine, but his. And one day, I remember the day as, as plain as yesterday, I went to Jeff and I said, Jeff, man, I have wronged you. Will you forgive me? Jeff began to weep. He said, Virgil, I've wronged you. Will you forgive me? After we left Moravia, he was one of my best friends. There. Guys, I'm asking you this morning, who do you need to go to and show the tender love of God? Say, I have wronged you and I'm sorry you forgive me. Maybe it's somebody in this place and before you leave this sanctuary, you need to go to that person and say, I have wronged you. I'm sorry. As the band comes up, I don't even know how to end this service. I'm just going to have Randall and Quitha play real quick. And if, and if you feel the, the, the tender love of God just pulling at your heart, 
And, and you're saying, God, I, I want you to change me. I, I, I no longer want to be the old man. I want to be the, the new man or the, the new woman. Maybe, maybe something that's been said or done these past few weeks has begun to, to, to touch your heart and begin to, to change who you are. And you say, now I'm able to receive the love of God. And, and maybe there's something that, that's in your past and, and, and you know that God's forgiven you of that, but you are saying, it's just too much, God. I, I can't receive that. And so you're, you're living in a place of defeat. God comes up and says, man, give it up. Give it up. Maybe you, maybe you're odd to somebody in your heart feeling towards somebody and, and you, you say in your heart, man, I, I've got to go to that somebody but I don't have the power to do that. Bring this for the next few minutes. This was a short sermon plenty of time. We got plenty of time. Let's be serious with God for just a second. Stop playing games. It's not about coming on Sunday morning, but it's about God changing us every single day. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. God speak into your heart. It may, it may not have anything to do with what I said this morning, but I just encourage you to come. Just fall on your face before him and say, God, I'm in need of you. I'm in need of your forgiveness. I'm in need to receive your forgiveness. And I need to forgive somebody else. Just in the quietness of this time, of our hearts. God, I just pray you speak to us. I ask you to speak to me. Father, as we go into a time of worship and response, Lord, I'm done. I'm going to step aside and I'm going to let you speak. Lord, I'm going to let your words penetrate the hearts of people. Lord, if people come, Lord, I just pray that the love of God would just speak in the surround them. Lord, the, the, the incredible relationship that awaits them, Lord, that they would be
there is someone in this room this morning, God, that needs to know your tender love. God, may they just feel your love flowing, Father, through them right now. God, would you just wrap your arms around them, just completely submerse them in your presence. Father, for those ones of us, Lord, that may need to show that tender love to someone else, God. I pray that you would quicken our hearts, God, that we would respond out of obedience to you, that we would go to those people and that we would make those situations right. And so, Lord, we pray as we go today, Father, that you would give us the victory over sin because you have defeated death, hell, and the grave and you live forevermore. We're so thankful to be your people today. Father, I pray that you would help us to act like it when we go into this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, everyone.